What's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna be finally getting the engine in the car, hopefully. To go everything, this is a fully built S55, uh, aero rods, Carrillo CP pistons, super tech valves and springs, back rod bearings, back main bearings, and it has a speed tech single turbo top mount kit with a EFR 9280. So hopefully we'll be getting this in by the end of the video. Everything's back on, intercooler, port injection, all the accessories, all the cooling stuff for the turbo, all the oil stuff. So hopefully we didn't miss anything, and I guess we'll find out the hard way once it's already in, but pretty sure I got everything. I, I went over some footage, so pretty sure I'm, I'm covered. All right, let's get into it. Didn't need to take off the hood before, but let's see what happens. That was way harder, way longer than getting it out. I don't know what happened, but for some reason, everything wanted to keep on going towards this side. Like the, the whole transmission wanted to go this way. I don't know what the hell it was, but that was at least like an hour since I started to get it in. Actually longer, more than an hour easily. But she's in, the trans is being held in up by the jack i need to get the trans mount and of course i have all the bolts named for the most part like what goes where and then i'm looking at the bags i'm like i don't know what happens to engine nuts and then this one says engine nuts and of course there's two bolts in it that are not engine nuts so i have to get those other than that she's in got the downpipe shoved in there I think next I'm going to do the exhaust housing. They recommend this Permatex copper gasket maker. So I'm going to put that on, let it sit, go tighten up some of the uh, trans bolts while this sits for like 20 minutes. And then we'll put the exhaust housing on. Then we'll do downpipe and we'll uh, work our way down. That's what they recommend. Not my idea. I'm against it, but they say it works well. So. get this downpipe out. All 
All right, just gotta get the downpipe back in. The engine is lifted a little bit. And there you go. Now it's time for lower down pipe. There's no way to grab this. I'm gonna try putting the V-Ban on. How does a human get this on? So I've been messing with this for like over an hour. Uh, I guess because the subframe is supposed to be dropped and you know, a lot of this is supposed to be a little more open, but what I did is I took off the upper downpipe from the turbo and I pushed the downpipe down to have this clamp lower to me. I then took off, there's a bracket right here that holds your O2 sensors. And that way everything can kind of come down closer to me because I guess uh, I'm doing steps backwards here. But yeah, so finally got it. I had a pretty tough time trying to get all this in, but managed to tighten the lower down pipe with the upper down pipe lowered, then mounted the upper down pipe. Then I uh, exhaust wrapped the dump tube since it's pretty close to the rubber engine mount, put that in and dump tube is loose. This block off plate is like my index finger straight like this. And then this L bracket is up against it and pointed down to then mount on here. So that would go something like that. So to mess with that, going to put my mid pipe on to line up everything, just to make sure I don't have to adjust anything drastically, but this is pretty um, flexible here. So shouldn't have to worry, but just to play it safe. And everything's still loose besides the upper down pipe. All right, everything's all done here, all tight. I am missing gaskets for the section right here. So I'm gonna finish that off another day. But uh, wastegate placement's pretty good. It's uh, a little close to the engine mount. Put a little protective aluminum foil thing there. And uh, other than that, everything fits. Not actually hitting anything, so that's always good. Just have to finish off tightening some of the oil lines since those are still loose because I have to put it on the turbo. And uh, other than that, pretty much done down here. It looks good, fits good. You can see, wraps around. So, yep, there you go. So I got a new two foot long coolant hose, which is still even that too long, but we'll at least do for now. This is a part number in case uh, any of you guys are also having problems if you have a turbo that has coolant, because the Speedtech one is a foot longer than this. Like how ridiculous this looks, imagine a foot longer. So now that I have that, I can put the rest of the turbo on and actually see how everything looks and lines up. I'm gonna be using those downpipe O2 ports, or at least one of them, so I plug these down here, everything's ready to go.
auto line sorted out. This is usually the line that wraps all across here. Took that apart a little bit, put some heat wrap on it, made this little heat shield here, and this main power line, another uh, power line are up here now. So I cut a little indentation in there. That way it'll sit in there, and uh, there's a cover all along here, but to have it this close to the downpipe is just not a good option. Other than that, pulled all these out to get ready to crank it. So I still need to put on the oil cooler. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put the whole radiator support and new AC condenser on. That way I can just have it there and I still have room to check everything out and make sure everything's good. So I just have to go and find those bolts that are in here. Got the radiator support all on, bolted on top, bolted on bottom. Still gotta put some uh, stuff obviously in there. Heat exchanger, radiator, but we're gonna get the Nishimoto oil cooler on. And then after that, we have to do the low pressure fuel pump and run the new E85 safe lineup. And then we can do a, a quick startup to make sure everything's good. Oil cooler is in. I threw out the old oil cooler and I didn't realize you have to reuse the grommets. So for now I got some foam stuff holding it in. All right, going to install Vader Solutions 3.5 fuel pump. I think it's two 525 like Walboros. Can't remember right now. Just gotta get in there, pop the old one out, put the new one in. And then for this, you're gonna need BMW's uh, original fuel pump removal tool. The part number is right here. How much gas do I have? Oh, I'm pretty full. Shit. All right, and she goes. And then you want to try and get it over to the passenger side, which has the same indentation as that side does. It's literally right here. So you want to try and shove it as far up, and then you'll reach. I already pulled mine just to be safe. Missing a couple little things to get it actually running, but definitely able to do a startup to make sure everything's good before finalizing all this stuff up here because don't want to have to take all this off if I find a little leak somewhere. Just chase down any wiring problems, in case there are, it's a little easier to get to. So we're going to uh, pour some oil in, rotate it by hand just to kind of get the oil pump circulating, crank it up without injectors and coil packs to circulate more oil and build fuel pressure. And then we can do an actual startup. So again, still have to leave the clutch, get a new clutch line because the one I got like broke somehow do some of the motive wiring, do the uh, second pump wiring in the back, but it should be able to start the way it is at least. Just gonna go under and make sure that nothing's already leaking. All right, so I've been messing with it and I couldn't get the car to recognize the key. I kept on saying that it wasn't in the car, but it would then recognize it because it would lock and unlock. So I don't know, it cranked. Gotta figure it out. So I got it to crank over, but shortly after it cranked over, I noticed a gigantic puddle of gas underneath. Figured it out. I managed to forget to plug this port here. 
on the uh, port injection, so it was just squirting out whatever 50 psi of fuel everywhere. I'll have to clean up all this extra fuel all over the block, and uh, we'll get back to starting. So plug that and um, put the intake manifold on. I started it one time with the spark plugs in, cranked good. So I'm gonna do it a couple more times, and then uh, actual start with the injectors and pull it back some. Gonna try starting it up with the intercooler and everything plugged in. Thank you. 